Hey all, here are OS Reviews. Today we're taking a quick look at the AAX AM7. This is a Pico projector, which is relatively flagship grade, and it has a true Full HD 1080p resolution output, which is pretty rare on a compact projector. A lot of these units will typically get you 480p, if not 720p native output. Of course, when you connect a computer or source as input, you're able to use 4K, but again, it's really that output resolution of the bulb that really counts. Otherwise, it does claim to have a three hour battery as well, which should be sufficient for one to two feature films, which is pretty decent. Another unique selling point here is despite the portable nature of this projector, it does have a pretty bright 1200 ANSI lumen output, uh, which is also far better than many other pocket projectors, which are around 100 lumens or so. Although it is worth mentioning that the full 1200 lumens can be reached when you are plugged into an AC outlet. When you are using just the built-in battery, it will try to reduce the brightness to save on power, and it will actually get upwards of 600 lumens. You're lacking, say, built-in Wi-Fi or Bluetooth for wireless screen sharing or casting functionality, although you can do that using a cable that you plug into the projector from, let's say, a phone or obviously using standard HDMI to any console or laptop. So that is one thing to keep in mind, but again, you can always pick up something as cheap as a Chromecast for $30 a pop and just add that functionality yourself. But we are still talking about a unit that will weigh a little under three pounds, and it's closer, I would say, to something like a mini tablet in size. I do want to point out that this brand, AAXA, does specialize in projectors. They've been making these for a number of years now, although this is one of their newer members in their current catalog. So aside from the projector itself, which we'll be taking a closer look at in a moment, uh, we also have some accessories inclusive of a quick user guide along with a included double A battery pack for powering the remote. Pretty standard stuff and the projector itself does also have a control pad system on the very top as you can see there are touch pads so you don't have to necessarily use the remote. There's also a component cable that you can use to plug in older DVDs for instance and there's also just the power adapter cable similar to a larger laptop charger so it's not going to be the lightest in the world and it does use a barrel plug for charging but again allows it to provide the full 1200 lumens output Although one thing that you don't get is a free bundled HDMI cable, but that's pretty standard stuff. So anyways, taking a closer look at the design of the M7 itself, overall it still is definitely compact as far as projector standards. Otherwise, the body is made predominantly out of a polycarbonate plastic, but doesn't feel too cheap or flimsy, has this blue kind of chamfered edge. And then located on the spine, you have access to the controls for going between focus, which is done electronically as opposed to a mechanical wheel. There's also the AV for the component cable, 3.5mm aux jack, you also have a Type-C port for connecting to optional smartphones for mirroring their display. Although honestly I would have liked them to also use this for charging, I think that would have made the port a little easier to replace as opposed to a barrel plug, but it is what it is. Micro SD card reader so you can load up some media content and it can play it back directly. Back your features just a simple power on and off key, there's a fan, and then on the other side we have Two of these stereo speakers, which again at 4 watts are really not bad for something so compact. USB thumb drive, which is similar to the micro SD card slot. You can read back content directly on the projector. And then of course the full-sized HDMI input and the DC power adapter. Now on the very front you get a little bit more ventilation for the fans and more importantly this bulb. Which by the way, I was a little bit surprised when I first looked at it because it seems a little bit more offset than I was expecting. As in, it almost seems like it would be blocked by the bottom portion of the unit. But that's actually not the case. It's tilted up ever so slightly and this is a purpose full decision, the image is completely fine. So this is not actually a defect, everything is firmly attached in there. Although one thing I would like them to see uh, incorporate would probably be a cover for the projector lens so that it doesn't attract dust when you aren't using it. But right now this entire thing is left open, but it is what it is. One other thing of course is it doesn't really come with a protective case in the box. Though you can also just put it into, say, a laptop sleeve or a backpack, and it will also be fine. On the very back here, we have also a place where you can actually remove the built-in battery to replace it, which is pretty neat. With that being said, it doesn't really have a centered thread for attaching it onto, say, a tripod, uh, for more easily mounting it, say, upside down a ceiling. In fact, they tell you that it's not designed for inverted ceiling mounting. You also won't find, say, a built-in kickstand for further elevating the angle as is, so you may have to just position it a little bit more flexibly yourself. But otherwise, I think it has a pretty clean and overall attractive design. 
uh, nothing too fancy. Here it is next to, again, a smartphone that has, say, a 6-inch display, so you get the better idea of what the size is like. So here's the main menu of the M7. It boots up in around 10 seconds or so, a pretty simple UI, but again, it doesn't really run on Android, so you aren't able to, say, access a app store or streaming content directly on here, but you do have the ability to read back files on a thumb drive or the micro SD card that you can optionally insert and also change some of the properties. Now, by the way, it's also a pretty good in terms of the sharpness and, again, brightness primarily. We do have, uh, here's an example of what it looks like if I am opening up the curtains behind me and now sunlight is flooding into the room here in afternoon, but the image is still mostly legible. This is something that less powerful projectors, especially pocket units, which have only say 100 lumens, would definitely struggle with. So now this is also how loud the projector gets, which is really not bad. Right now the projected image is roughly 80 inches against the wall, but you can hear that there's not too much sound unless you are putting it just close to the camera here, it's actually under 50 decibels. So one of the more quiet projectors that I've reviewed as well, especially considering the brightness and also that resolution. One slight quirk though is the touchpad at the top of the projector really isn't backlit. So it might be a little harder to make out if you are in really darker environments. Overall, it is also pretty easy to focus using the electronic dial as you can see there, even though it's not automatic. So going through some of these settings here, what we can adjust include the picture mode, such as uh, whether we want it to have have a slightly colder slash warmer color temperature so you can adjust the RGB properties yourself. Standard stuff like aspect ratio, right now it's 16 by 9, but I can also turn it into 4 by 3, as well as the direction of the image. If you do want to actually flip the image uh, vertically, other way around, upside down, that can be done. Uh, built-in speakers to have higher bass versus treble, you can also adjust those properties. We do have a keystone correction option, but again, this is not done automatically, it's rather done digitally, so you can change this to, for instance, further reduce things like the tilt, and you can see the image here starting to adjust accordingly. And under input, you're able to switch between, say, connecting to a smartphone using that Type-C port, if your phone supports OTG output using the Type-C cable, as well as the HDMI or the RCA sources. So let's jump into here and and take a closer look at how the image fares. Right, so some impressions here in terms of the audio quality at least, it's also above average. In terms of the speakers, definitely sound better than you would think coming out of such a portable unit. It has a little bit of depth to it and doesn't sound too tinny even at higher volume levels. The image quality here is also doing a very good job. Colors are very saturated and rich. Now out of the box by default, there might be a slightly more greenish hue in terms of the color temperature, but you can always adjust that if you prefer something, say, warmer or colder by changing the RGB properties. Super cinematic because of the sharpness and the brightness level. Again, casting this onto a ceiling of any wall, especially if you're tight on space, you're able to just get so much more immersiveness out of the content that you're watching. So this is getting very high marks in terms of the actual resolution and the quality of the picture, I have to say, is one of the best that I've seen out of a Pico projector, and definitely you won't be disappointed when it comes to just watching back videos, even doing some gaming on here, it's perfectly serviceable, as you can see there, thanks to that brightness and resolution, so if we are zooming into things like dialog boxes and text details, it still is going to be perfectly readable. And even edges of the screen, as you can see there, look sharp without any distortions or discoloring. With that being said, you aren't really getting a fast refresh rate, but that's kind of to be expected. Those don't really exist these days out of projectors. Uh, it's really standard monitors and TVs that are starting to adopt, say, 90 or 120 hertz. So keep that in mind if you're sensitive to that stuff, but it is offset by the really large display that you're able to achieve. Again, if you do stretch it to 100 to 200 inches, you get just a lot more immersiveness as a result. Here's also a closer look at some other applications, such as if you are using it for the occasional presentation for businesses, it will still also function all right. You can definitely still make out text details. Everything is still legible to the audience. It's something that you really won't get if you're looking at a 720p or especially a 480p native resolution projector. It's just going to become a lot more 
blocky and pixelated. Same really goes with a PowerPoint, for instance. It does itself without really any issues. When it comes to these smaller details, text still is readable, as well as images, of course, still looking quite good. So really no problems here as far as uh, being a good enough experience. Even if you have to give the odd presentation, everything will still seem to be pretty clean and crisp as far as the text details, vibrant and colorful in terms of the images, and everything just becoming still very enjoyable if you're trying to share an article with someone, you're trying to do a little bit of reading. One additional feature here is you do have the ability to charge devices as well using that type a port so if you actually toggle the switch onto the charge mode it will act as a large power bank maybe not the most practical but if you have this with you and you're in a pinch and you have to charge up your phone for just a few minutes it does have that feature albeit it will be charging at a relatively slow 5 volt 2 amp rate all right, so that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the AAXA M7 compact projector. And really that Full HD Res is the main selling point here. Again, true Full HD resolution still being relatively rare on the market when it comes to these DLP portable units. Although you can definitely tell areas where they did cut a little bit in terms of corners, such as not having a kickstand or a threaded uh, tripod mount on the back, as well as no built-in smart OS or streaming capabilities. But in terms of the actual picture quality, it's awesome and certainly no issues in terms of connecting it to regular HDMI sources. So you can check out more details if interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the AAXA M7 Pico LED projector.